first, let's talk about what's actually giving you these illusions. We have three different systems in play that can really give you any type of illusion. Mm -hmm. The first one is our vestibular system. So the vestibular system is, a, is your inner ear, mm -hmm. we like to call it. But basically, there's three little rings in your ear, and they all are on different axes. Now, these rings are filled with a little bit of fluid and some hairs with sensors attached to them. Now, as that fluid moves through, it's going to move the hairs, which mm -hmm. gives a signal to those sensors and gives you a sense of motion. Mm -hmm. So though, that's one of the systems that's going to be in play in some of these illusions. The next one is your nervous system. That's going to be your bones, mm -hmm. your muscles, your nerves, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That can also give you a sense of motion. The last one is optical, so your eyes. Now, this is the most trusted thing over here is your eyes. It's very important. We got to keep them safe and uh, make sure we're able to use our eyes to scan our instruments because our instruments is how we're going to get uh, combat, combat these uh, illusions. Correct. And our eyes is how we're going to fix the other senses. Exactly. To figure it out. Exactly. Figure so out those, what's going wrong. those are the three systems that are really going to give you those illusions. And it's a really good uh, exercise to go ahead and not only learn the illusions, but learn the why behind the illusions. Why, when I go from a climb to straight and level, why is that giving me that illusion? This is one of those vestibular ones. So the mm -hmm. vestibular system that we just talked about, it's going to play right into the inversion illusion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. So when you are climbing, let's say, and we're climbing, 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 what's going to happen to your vestibular system? Well, eventually, when you're in that stationary climb, your vestibular system is going to kind of level out. That fluid's going to kind of eventually neutralize. And if I go ahead and level off the airplane really quickly, well, what's going to happen to that uh, fluid in your inner ear? Well, it's going to start to spin backwards, and it's going to give you that uh, sensation of rolling backwards. So what are we going to do as a pilot, right? You may end up pitching, and you may try to counteract that feeling that you feel in your inner ear. But what should we do instead, Sarah? Instruments. Yeah. Trust your eyes. You have the tools within the cockpit. Trust them. Yeah, exactly. Scan, scan. It's really and it's really easy to say on the ground, mm -hmm. but once you're in the air and you're you can't see anything outside, you're in the clouds or you're at night, you're gonna have that sensation that you're tumbling and you're and you're going backwards or forwards, depending if you're going down and up or up and down. But you're gonna have this sensation, and it's super important to be like, hey, I know my body's gonna do this, mm -hmm. but I need to go ahead, look at my pitch attitude look at my vertical speed, and fly with our nice scan of our instruments. So Matagravic, yeah. this one actually has to do with your nervous system. So your mm -hmm. bones, your muscles, your nerves, all that kind of stuff. That can also play tricks on your body. So the way I like to think about it is we've all flown at the airlines in the back. And let's say you don't get lucky enough to have a window seat. So you got an aisle seat and the person next to you shuts that window shade. So you can't see anything outside that airplane. Well, those pilots come over to the runway. They push the thrust levers all the way up and you feel that acceleration in the back of your seat. And suddenly you feel like the airplane's slightly pitching up. Well, that is going to be somatographic. That acceleration, that push back in the seat makes you feel like you're pitching up. Same thing on landing. If you've ever been in the back of an airliner and you can't see outside the windows because somebody took the window seat or something like that, <laughs> uh, as soon as they touch down and those brakes are applied and the thrust reversers come out, that deceleration is going to make you feel like the airplane's like almost going into the mm -hmm. ground. But again, your body's playing tricks on you. And that's going to be the somatographic one. These illusions can compound on each other, so you can feel multiple at once, mm -hmm. and it can be coupled with more abnormalities of things happening. So maybe you have an issue with the airplane doing something it's not supposed to be doing, and then you couple that with the fact that you have an illusion happening on your body. It can really be a domino effect. And what we call this at the airlines, and what I like to teach my students, it's called the Swiss cheese model. Mm. So if you take a bunch of uh, slices of Swiss cheese, it has all those holes in it, right? And we have all these barriers to protect ourselves from an accident. So it's very rare that a line can make it through 10 different layers of Swiss cheese, because all the holes are in different spots. And mm. those, are our, those layers of cheese are our barrier. 
So that first barrier is an I'm safe checklist. And then maybe the second one is following uh, standard procedures and all that. It takes a lot to line up for an accident to happen based on just one thing. So even if you get an illusion, all right, I'm able to recognize it and get out of it. All right, that barrier stopped that from becoming something worse. Okay.